Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Thank you all for the happy anniversaries. Um, I haven't had a chance to get to comments yet, so I'm assuming that I'll thank you in advance. Tonight we're going to be reading out of Psalm 148, 14, A People Near Unto Him. The whole verse says, And he has exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, of the children of Israel, a people near to him, praise the Lord. Let's just read this whole thing. It's short. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, you heavens of heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He also established them forever and ever. He made a decree which will not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all the depths. Fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind fulfilling his word. Mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven, and he has exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, of the children of Israel, a people near to him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. The dispensation of the old covenant was that of distance. When God appeared even to his servant Moses, he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. And when he manifested himself upon Mount Sinai to his chosen, his own chosen, and separated people, one of the first commands was, Thou shalt set bounds about the mount. Both in the sacred worship of the tabernacle and the temple, the thought of distance was always prominent. The mass of the people did not even enter the outer court. Into the inner court, none but the priests might dare to intrude. While into the innermost place, or the Holy of Holies, the high priest entered but once in a year. The glory of the Lord, they, the, the, the way it goes, you know, in, in the old records, that they had little bells. And this goes along to something that they still believe to this day. They had little bells tied on the bo very bottom of the robe so that they would, it would tinkle and they would hear it when they would walk around. And one of the, one of the practices they do, even to this day, if you see them on the Western Wall praying, they're always moving back and forth and forward and backward because they do that because they believe God is always moving. Well, even back then they did that. They constantly moved so those little bells would ring. And they had a rope that was tied to the, the high priest's foot because it could have been that the glory of the Lord was, would have been, would have, could have overwhelmed him and he would have gone down or even died. And if that was the case, since they couldn't go into Gideon, they would pull him out by the rope. It's very interesting, the practices they did and the reasons why they did them. It was as if the Lord in those early ages would teach man that sin was so utterly loathsome to him that he must treat men as lepers put without the camp. And when he came nearest to them, he yet made them feel the width of the separation between a holy God and an impure sinner. When the gospel came, we were placed on quite another footing. The word go was exchanged for come. Distance was made to give place to nearness, and we who aforetime were afar off were made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. I was saying this in a church congregation. There be amens everywhere. Incarnate deity has no wall of fire about it. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Is the joyful proclamation of God as he appears in human flesh. In the form of Jesus. Not now does he teach the leper his leprosy by setting him at a distance, but by himself suffering the penalty of his defilement. Remember, we covered this the other day. What a state of safety and privilege is this nearness to God through Jesus. Do you know it by experience? If you know it, are you living in the power of it? Marvelous is this nearness, yet it is to be followed by a dispensation of greater nearness still. When it shall be said, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he doth dwell among them. Hasten it, Lord. Hasten your kingdom, indeed. Like I told you guys before, there's even an even greater existence waiting. 
an existence where we can feel the pure, perfect love of God, full strength, the love of Jesus Christ, full force, because we will have bodies that can take it, bodies that can handle that. Our current bodies cannot. Our current bodies cannot endure such glory. Our new ones will be able to. And it will be an amazing thing. And we'll be there to see it, to be a part of it. The whole point of all this stuff is to get God glorified and to bring people into salvation and to create a new heavens, a new earth, and have a new existence for eternity. It's a beautiful thing. It's an amazing thing. And we are all partakers in that because of our faith in Christ, because of salvation by his blood, justification from God, sanctification from Jesus Christ, and pretty soon, redemption of the purchased possession when Christ comes for us. It's a beautiful thing. I want you guys to remember Psalm, or not Psalm, uh, remember Hebrews 9.28. Keep that verse marked. For he will come a second time apart from sin for salvation, for those eagerly waiting for him. He's coming a second time for the people who are waiting for him, who are eagerly watching for him, who desire his arrival. That's a very specific statement he makes for a very specific group of people. I find that interesting. He wants us there just as much as we want to be there. But this has to be done first. These things must be fulfilled first. This life must be lived first. But the day is coming when it's enough. And the Father will say, that's it. Let's finish this. Go get the church. Get them out of there. And let's get this started. I've had enough of these people and what they're doing. Look at what they're doing today. Look at the horrendous stuff that's happening today. Did you see what happened? Was it, was it Indonesia? I think it was Indonesia or India. Well, it's about to rain. That uh, those two dams broke. They think there's over 20,000 people dead. Something like 1.5 billion metric tons of water shot down that river. Something like that. It was way up there. Shot down that river full force. Took out a quarter of the city. Took and took the people with it. One of the people that was a rescuer saying, we've been warning them. We've been warning them for years that the dam has cracks in it. It needs to be fixed, and they wouldn't do it. Look at what they're doing with children today. Putting them on parade at drag shows. That is not a place for children. Some of the disgusting books they have in schools that are being read to children, but they won't be allowed to be read in public or on the school board. But it's okay for the kids to read it. No. See, they're doing something that the Lord warned expressly against. Don't touch the little ones. If his wrath comes on anything first, it'll be because of the children. Look at how many that they've aborted. That blood cries out from the earth. And the powers that be, the, the, the officials in government and some of the sick stuff they're into, some of the crazy things they're doing, the Lord is going to get tired of this. And when it comes time, when the day arrives, it will be a day of incredible, incredible realization. We will be drawn closer to him, closer than we've ever been and closer than we ever will be. He will come and he will collect those that are his, get his people. And then there's even going to be more that are going to come. The great multitude, the two witnesses. And then those that are called up at the final part of the of the uh, resurrection at the end of the tribulation. All drawn close, drawn near to him. Guys, whenever the millennial rain starts, Jacob's ladder is going to be appear, is going to appear, and people are the angels and beings are going to be going back and forth along Jacob's ladder. What an incredible thing to think about, to try to picture in your mind. And it brings about a, 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 a strange euphoria 
of knowing that this is something that's coming in the future. And even though we haven't seen it, we have hope for it. Even though we, we don't, the only evidence we have is right here. We have confirmation through the Holy Spirit that these things are true and they're going to happen. Even if we don't know what they look like, even if we don't fully grasp what it's going to be like, we know it's real. It's going to happen. We're the ones with faith. We're the ones that believe him. We're the ones that trust him. He will be drawing us close to him. And what a beautiful existence it will be to be close to the Father, close to our Lord, close to each other in perfect harmony. A people near unto him is not just the Jewish people. It's not just the Israelites. It's all his saints. That's what it said in the psalm. All his saints. Look at what this says. This is this is actually a very interesting thing that it says here. Yeah, right here in the last verse. And he has exalted the horn of his people. The praise of all his saints. Of the children of Israel. Notice there's a separation there. A people near to him. Praise the Lord. He doesn't want us here any more than we want to be here. But these things have to be fulfilled. But what, how much greater will the glory be when we finally arrive on the other side? Jesus' love is greater than ours. His expectation is greater than ours. His urgency is greater than ours. His desire for us to be with him is greater than ours. What an amazing thing that he's going to come and take us home. And then this life won't have an effect on us anymore. This life won't hold us down anymore. This life won't be a burden anymore. It'll be a better life. Well, this life is a gift. But the troubles of this life will no longer be in our way. Because, because we will be with him forever. It's just, it, it, it causes one to pause and to consider those words. It causes one to, to, to stagger at the possibilities of what's on the horizon. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing him in his glory and being like him. I'm looking forward to leaving the pains and the troubles and the issues of this life behind and standing in glory with him. Taking a position at his right hand and going with him wherever he goes. How a person can possibly deny that, I have no idea. Because if you look at this life, what is there to gain from this life? Other than salvation. Because in this life, you die and there's no enjoyment of it anymore. All that work, all those things is worthless. But the next one is forever. And it never grows old. It never gets boring. We never grow tired of it. It is something far beyond our understanding and comprehension. Just wait, you'll see. Very soon. With all the signs that are going on, very soon. We will get to see him in his glory and be like him. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.